Fusion's views are the windows into your project. By understanding the functions of the display views, you will be more efficient at navigating your project, comparing tools, and comprehending all the data available. Let's begin. In order to view the output of any tool node in the project, all that's required is to drag the node of the display view you wish to use. Below the view, you can see several icons and buttons used to interact with the view. First, along the bottom, Starting at the left and working right, we see the subview. This can be enabled to display a number of subview options, such as a vector scope for color correction or a listing of metadata confirmed within the file or sequence. By clicking on the triangle next to the button, you could select which of the subviews you wish to have enabled. Next, we have a scale button. This allows you to easily change the scale of an image in the view. Clicking on the button pops up a number of preset scales to choose from. Next to it, we have a convenient fit button to easily toggle to fit the view. The image can also be scaled via a mouse and keyboard. By holding down the middle mouse button or mouse wheel and left clicking on the display, the viewport will zoom in and out while you move your hand left or right. Holding down the middle mouse button and left clicking will zoom in on the viewport. Holding down the middle mouse button and right clicking will zoom out. Using plus or minus on the numeric keypad, the viewport will zoom in and out accordingly. Next we have the A and B buffers, as well as the split bar buttons. Each display view in Fusion offers two image buffers, A and B. These can be used in a number of ways, such as to compare an image pre and post color correction. The splitter bar allows the display view to show both the A and B buffer simultaneously, with a division bar between them. This bar can be used to wipe back and forth between items of interest in both the A and B buffer by clicking on the small rectangle handle. By clicking on the bar outside the handle, the bar can be rotated to any arbitrary angle. In order to return to a more structured angle, move the mouse cursor closer to the handle and the splitter bar will snap to 90 or 45 degrees. Finally, if you lose the bar after zooming in or panning the image, hold Alt and Control and left clicking in the display will snap the handle to the mouse pointer. The little pair of glasses represents the stereo settings for the view. With the correct hardware and images, Fusion will display a stereo image in 3D. By clicking on the triangle next to the glasses, several options are presented. The settings used in the pop-up are going to depend on the content being used for the stereo workflow. Fusion supports viewing anaglyph, interlaced, quad buffer, stacked, and IZ3D content. Each of these modes will have several options available. Next we have the snap button. This will toggle between using the standard floating point values of the image coordinates and pixel coordinates. Using the pop-up arrow, you can select between pixel centers and pixel boundaries. Adjusting these settings can alleviate the softening of an image when sub-pixel filtering is applied. The color bars allow you to select between full color or any other viewable channel such as red, green, blue, alpha, or Z depth. Next is the LUT button or lookup table. This can be used to compensate for gamma corrections or alter an image in a predefined way without altering the color information contained within the file. The LUT will only affect the display view. Several presets are available and once the LUT is enabled, selecting Edit via the pop-up triangle calls upon the LUT editor. Here a LUT can be created or loaded from disk. Next we have the ROI or Region of Interest. This can be enabled to tell Fusion that only a certain portion of the image is of interest for rendering. This can significantly increase the performance of the application when dealing with large images. DOD, or Domain of Definition, is next. It will draw a bounding box with pixel coordinates around the active pixels of an image. The little lock icon will lock the display and prevent any changes made from a tool from updating the image. This can be useful for reference images. The next icon represents the image control overlay. This will toggle between displaying the view controls of a node. 
This can be useful when you wish to evaluate the image without the clutter of paths or polygon edges. The checker icon will toggle between displaying the image pre-multiplied by its alpha over a checkered background or the image on its own. SMR, or Smooth Resize, will apply a filtering to the display, smoothly representing the image when scaled to more than 100%. The 1 to 1 icon will force Fusion to display each pixel at a 1 to 1 ratio. This is particularly handy for those working with NTSC or anamorphic footage. The icon with two gradient bars represents the normalize display function. This is generally used for image data that is present outside the normal 0 to 1 color information, such as Z buffer data or HDR float color data. This will normalize the color information to fit within the 0 to 1 range mapping the darkest pixels to 0 and the brightest pixels to 1. Finally, we have the control selection pop-up. This will display the name of the active control in the view. This tool can be particularly handy when there are several controls for a tool available. This can also be changed by using the tab button with the display view active. You should now be familiar with Fusion's display views to effectively navigate the images of your project. As always, for the most up-to-date descriptions and details on Fusion, visit manual.vfxpedia.com.